What's up, five fans? Uh, as always, hit that subscribe button if you guys are new to the channel. Much appreciated. Okay, where do we start first? Hmm. All right, first things first, um, the scorecards. Bit wide, bit wide. I, I had it eight rounds to four to Joshua, uh, maybe even seven rounds to five. I was watching the US feeds. So I was watching Showtime's feed, and they had it, I think, that close as well. Um, obviously, Carl Froch saw it a completely different way. I think he had it similar to the judges, but I had it a lot closer. Um, I think that Joseph Parker probably isn't going to get credit um, for some of the back foot work he was doing, but I think he was looking very good on the back foot. His jab was good. He threw, He started the first four or five rounds throwing a double jab, head and body, head and body, and then he kind of stopped midway, and then he tried to kind of start it again, or kick start it, shall I say, in the latter rounds, but I think it was too late then. But I think... That double jab was pretty good, and I think it was kind of offsetting Anthony Joshua a bit. And he had a kind of awkward style, and I've never really seen that style from him, if I'm honest with you. Um, hands kind of low, hands all over the place. Anthony Joshua didn't know what was coming. Um, very good. Very fluid is Joseph Park, especially for a heavyweight that weighs nearly 17 stone. You wouldn't know it. His hands were fast. His feet wasn't as fast, but nonetheless, um, I could see... From the first two or three rounds that he was going to cause Anthony Joshua problems in terms of Anthony Joshua landing clean. Um, I think I can count on one hand how many times Anthony Joshua landed clean. And I think two or three of them were illegal. I.e. when he was putting the head down of Joseph Parker with his left hand and then trying to uppercut with his right. Um, referee was atrocious. Honestly, atrocious. Um, and probably shouldn't referee a major title fight again. He was just doing so many things wrong. I mean, Anthony Joshua continually tried to force the head down of Joseph Parker and land uppercuts, which is an illegal tactic, said nothing. Um, it was almost that Anthony Joshua controlled the referee. Anthony Joshua kind of said, look, there's tape in my hands. Oh, OK, Anthony, we'll stop the fight. Anthony Joshua would say, OK, I've been headbutted. Oh, OK, Anthony, we'll stop the fight. It was, just, it was an awful performance from a guy that's refereed a few world title fights before. And I mean, those kind of referees, you need to get in Kenny Bayless. I'm sorry, Kenny Bayless is the best referee in the world. You get him in that ring. I mean, I don't understand why Kenny Bayless can't travel over. I, I never understand it. He's the best referee in the game. This is the one of the biggest fights in the world this year. Get Kenny fucking Bayless there, please. Because we don't want any issues about referee. And I'm looking on Twitter, my Twitter timeline, and everyone's just talking about the referee. And that's what you don't need for a major fight. But again, um, kudos to Anthony Joshua getting the job done. I think the lighter weight helped him in the latter rounds. I think the idea for Joseph Parker was to take him into the late rounds, hence why they kept on going to the body of AJ. Um, but AJ didn't slow down. Um, I think he had a second wind around eight or nine when I think maybe Joseph Parker stole those rounds. But I think he got his second wind back. And I think 10, 11, 12, he kind of closed the show well enough. Not spectacular, but well enough. Um, I, I'm going to say this, and people might disagree People might agree, I don't know. Um, I'm an AJ fan. So when I'm saying this, then you know it's true. AJ is extremely one-dimensional. I've said this a few times. I think he's added a decent left hook to his arsenal. But apart from that, it's just the same thing over and over again. Jab, jab, overhand right. Jab, jab, overhand right maybe go to the body once in a while, but that's it. Call me greedy, but I just want to see and expect to see more now. Um, you look at someone like Joseph Parker who was fighting off the back foot, throwing double jabs to the body, mixing it up, going into the head, causing Anthony Joshua problems because he's mixing it up. Um, good foot movement, good head movement. Anthony Joshua's kind of head is very static, um, moves in straight lines. Even when he's on the defense, goes back in straight lines. I just expect to see, like I said, a lot more from a guy that is now one belt away from unifying the division. You With a good train in Rob McCracken, I expect to see a bit more. Rob McCracken is considered a good trainer, and I think a lot of that consideration is because of what Carl Froch did. Um, again, Carl Froch is one of my best British boxers, but he was extremely one-dimensional as well. I don't think AJ should be changing trainers, don't get me wrong, but there should be a lot more variation in what he does, especially at this lighter weight as well. There's a lot of talk about who's 
who AJ is going to fight next, right? Um, a lot of people have said it won't be Wilder. It's definitely not going to be Wilder. Absolutely no chance. And we'll talk about that in a minute. And um, they're all talking about Jarrell Miller, possibly. I'll be honest with you. A good boxer is going to cause him a huge amount of problems. And I said this about Wilder, right? I said a good boxer will cause him problems. I think we all saw it. Yes, I predicted Ortiz to win, but I think we all can admit Ortiz caused him huge problems. Um, same for AJ. and I, Same for AJ. Um, Ortiz would cause AJ problems. Even now, even after the defeat, even though Ortiz is about 72, he would cause Anthony Joshua problems because... I'm watching Anthony Joshua and I, I, I'm predicting what he's going to do next and he does it. I'm predicting, yeah, he's going to throw a lazy jab and try and throw an overhand right and he just does that and he just does exactly that. I don't see anything special. I, I give him credit for the weight loss. I think that weight is his weight and it suits him. But that fight was bad. If I'm Tyson Fury right now, if I'm Tyson Fury, I sign to Matchroom I get the I get my ass in the fucking gym now. I'm telling you, Tyson Fury will cause AJ all types of problems with that movement, all types of problems. And um, I'm just not sure if I'm honest with you. I'm not sure. And this is a few fights now. I mean, I, I wasn't sure after the attack and performance. I was like, hmm. And I kind of thought, okay, it was down to weight. He's lost the weight now. Now I'm looking at that performance. I'm thinking again, hmm. It's not. I, I'm not convinced he can go on and dominate for a long time. I, I, I'm really not. Um, will he beat the likes of Jarrell Miller? Absolutely. Those fights are kind of a foregone conclusion. But I wouldn't mind seeing him in against Ortiz or Povetkin. Um, but let's be straight and honest. On that performance, the aggressiveness of Wilder would put him to sleep. People might say, oh, Wilder would leave himself open. Wilder would put him to sleep. And Wilder put him to sleep because Wilder's extremely erratic. And Joshua is just, um, you know, Joshua reminds me of a bit. He reminds me of Scott Quigg. Um, he does all the basics very well, but there's just nothing special. And I think he's very fortunate that he's in a division where I think the two best boxers are maybe just a bit past their sell-by date now. And that's Povetkin and Luis Ortiz. If those two guys were 31 and 32 respectively, Joshua would be in a hell of a amount of trouble. Um, what, what do you guys think of the performance? Am I just being too tough on him? Or do you guys understand what I'm saying? Um, and what for Parker next? It was a decent performance from Parker. People might not give him credit for that performance, but it was a decent performance. You know, after watching that Parker performance... I'm watching how Huey Fury kind of was negative, but at times made Parker look a bit like a slugger. I, I, I'm going to keep a watch out for Huey Fury. He's only 23. If they can add an injection of aggressiveness to him, he could do something. He could do something, Huey Fury. Um, but guys, what do you make of the performance? Let me know. Because as far as I'm concerned, he lost a score out of 10 in terms of a mark for Joshua. Four, maybe five, but a four. And on that performance, like I've said, if I'm Tyson Fury, I, I, I think, yeah, piece of piss. If I'm doing to water, I'm thinking, get me in the ring with AJ right now. But unfortunately for both of those men, those fights ain't happening for a long, long time.